president of the University Society of Hinduism, Rajan Zed, and I apologize, uh, I can't stand today, but okay, Rajan, go ahead. I shall be reading from ancient Hindu scriptures in Sanskrit and run, translate into English. Om Bhurbu Vahaswaha Tat Savitur Varenayam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yona Prachodhyat We meditate on the transcendental glory of the Deity Supreme who is inside the heart of the earth, inside the life of the sky and inside the soul of the heaven. May He stimulate and illuminate our minds. Astoma Sadgamya Tamsoma Jyotir Gamya Mrityor Mamratam Gamya Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Tasmada sakta astatam karyam karma samajara asakto hyacharan karma parma panoti purusha karma neva hi samsidhi masita jankadya loka sangreha mevapi sampa shankar tumrahasi. Strive constantly to serve the welfare of the world. By devotion to selfless, one attains the supreme goal of life. Do your work with the welfare of others always in mind. Om Saha Navavtu, Saha Nobunaktu, Saha Viryan Karva Bahai, Tejasvi Navadita Mastu, Ma Bidvisa Bahai. May we be protected together, may we be nourished together, may we work together with great vigor, may our study be enlightening, may no obstacle arise between us. Samniva Akuti, Samna Hirdyaniva, Samna Mastu Vomano, Yathavasusahasti. United your resolve, united your hearts. May your spirits be at one that you may long together dwell in unity and concord. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om. Thank you. Thank you, Rajan. If you'd remain standing now, uh, Miss Bybee, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next we have public comment. I'll call you up one at a time. If you still want to make public comment under number four, please fill out one of these cards and give them to the clerk and give them to me and I'll call your name. Okay, first we have Liz Griffin. Come on up. Uh, you can either stand or have a seat, but the microphone is right there. Make sure the red light's on so you can turn it on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm here to represent the Save Wild Creek uh, group, obviously. Well, not obviously, but... Okay. Probably, probably be able to hear it better. <clears throat> oh, the button's good. It's on. Yes. I'm here to represent the Save Wild Creek group, and um, obviously we have some concerns about this project, so we're visiting wherever we can. I am sure some of you have already been inundated with a lot of comments and feelings about this and whatever, but I, I've just come today to reiterate my opposition to it. Uh, I firmly believe that children are not educated by buildings. They are educated by educators, and it is not the building that educates the child. I don't believe that this, as I term it, mega project is in the best interest of our students, and I think it Next is Darlene Hess, Hesse, Hess, Hesse, Hesse. I've heard it both ways. Well, good 
afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm sorry to be here today for Wild Creek, but I am, because I've lived there for over 40 years. It's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place to live. It's beautiful for the animals and for the people, and it should remain a recreational area. And another thing I've heard on KOH uh, all through the week that we're concerned about the ore ditch flooding. No, we're not concerned about ore ditch. I've never seen it flood but I am concerned about the flood plain. And there's a dam up above, and when the school is built and it's flooded, you guys are gonna be in a lot of trouble for okay in this. How can you take a million, a PGA golf course and tear it down that costs millions and millions of dollars to build? And then going to the school, and it's gonna be hug high, it sparks in Sparks area, I, I just don't believe it. You're making a very big mistake, and I hope you reconsider, because this is a, a too nice of an open area to be destroyed. I think you should all really think about this. It's a sad day for all of us. And I'm not trying to say just because for selfishness. I'm saying it for all people, for everyone. And I'm not against schools. I think they're wonderful. should always have education is our way out of ignorance, and I just believe in education. This is not an educated move at all, and I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but anyway, I just say, I hope you people rethink all this. This is really a bad move. A lot of people coming into town, and a lot of men love to play golf, and it could be a beautiful area. It's been run down. I go over there every so often. I'm not a golfer, but I do love this golf course, and I love the open area, and it's a Bad, terrible mistake. Traffic, unbelievable. It, we're not going to be able to get out of our neighborhood. We can't hardly get out now. It's just not a safe place, and kids being bussed in. The people of Warshaw County should be very upset about this. Taking millions of dollars and tearing it up that costs a, a PGA golf course. This, this golf course should be... Re, just everything should be repaired on it, remain a golf course. And these kids aren't even in our area. They have to be bussed in. Who's going to pay for all these buses? This is going to be an outrageous expense. The people will never forgive all you people for doing this. I know I sure won't. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next is John Capurro. Good, how are you, sir? I just wanted to voice opposition to the Wild Creek Golf, or the siting of the high school and Wild Creek Golf Course. The need for a high school is needed, but not at that location. That is not an area that's rapidly growing. As each of you know, if you drive around Spanish Springs and over by DeAndrea Golf Course, that's where your growth is. That's where you need to put a school. Uh, I'm asking each and every one of you to look at the facts. School district is really pushing this. They're trying to put it down our throat as quickly as they can, try to get ownership by <coughs> August 1st so they can go through without anything stopping them. There are lots of issues, traffic, flooding, noise pollution, light pollution. All these things have to be th thought about, and you need to ask a lot of questions because... I'm sorry, the school district doesn't want those questions asked. They're upset the fact that it made it to the paper, and that's the way that things are. Uh, I think it has to be done in an open fashion. Uh, I live on the east boundary of the golf course. My house is next to the fifth tee, so I've been with the golf course. My, grand, my great parent, grandparents purchased that property in the 1860s, 1870s, early 70s, and I was raised on that. I know all that area, and I would hate to see an area that has been somewhat preserved taken out. So I just ask that you have an open mind on this and think about that and maybe ask a few questions of people because I think it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, George E. Afternoon. Uh, my name is George Lee. I live at uh, 3506 uh, Brassy Drive. I'm opposed to the building of the new high school at the lower end of uh, Wild Creek Golf Course for a number of reasons. 
the traffic would become even more congested and with a probable increase of accidents caused by teen drivers in the area, especially when you're going to have 2,500 students there. Um, widening Sullivan and Wiedekind for bus traffic and for other things is going to cost money. Is that going to be paid for by the uh, RTA? Is that going to be paid for by us through you? You know, is that going to be something that's saddled on the, uh, on the city? Um, the golf course is situated on the approach center line to the Reno Tahoe International Airport. And there have been uh, at least three aircraft uh, crashes near the golf course in recent past. Air traffic noise would certainly be a distracting factor for teachers and students alike. This would be an added mitigation cost. Um, the uh, loss of green space provided by the Wild Creek Golf Course would directly affect the microclimatological balance of the northern portion of the Reno Sparks Basin. Replacing the cooling effect of this green space with additional heat causing elements of asphalt, cars, proposed school buildings would raise the temperature of our community, specifically in that area, which now has got, you know, the green space to cool it. I'm very concerned about the additional cost of infrastructure in the area incurred by the proposed plan to the Spark City taxpayers. Why the rush to judgment on choosing this location instead of the summarily dismissed sites uh, that were suggested by local officials? I believe some of you suggested other sites where they could put it. Um, now we understand that the property transfer is expected to take place in August, uh, with, but no proper necessary impact studies for traffic, sewage, EPA, wildlife, water flood, uh, the, because it's the floodplain area, it's made to absorb water. It's not, uh, you know, the, there was a, a month period this last winter where there was, in the spring, where uh, it was flooded on the golf course, but that didn't run over into McCarran or down into the housing uh, situation below McCarran. Um, so the golf course has a purpose, you know, for being there. Um, uh, it's backward and unacceptable to uh, transfer the property uh, without doing these studies first to see if there's, you know, it's even feasible. They haven't done a, a geological uh, evaluation to see if the ground would even support building. I appeal to your common sense. Wild Creek Golf Course is a PGA golf course and has served the Sparks community for over four decades and would be irreplaceable once destroyed. Thank you. Lee. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Darla Lee. Um, at the risk of repeating some of the things, um, I'll just go ahead and read what I've written so I don't get confused. Um, my husband and I moved to Sparks about two years ago to live with our daughter and son-in-law from our former home of 35 years in rural Ohio. And as you might imagine, going from a two-acre farm to a compacted housing development was challenging. But the transition was made a great deal easier for us by the nearness of the Wild Creek Golf Course directly to the east of us. This green space with the wildlife it draws to the area has been a great blessing to us. But in May, we heard that the Washoe County School District proposed to destroy part of the golf course in order to build a new high school. And just on the face of this, this proposal seemed very strange to me. We have experienced an absolute traffic snarl caused by the pyramid Bacaran expansion for the past six months. And frankly, it's ridiculous to think that housing in or bus or housing, busing in 2,500 students via McCarran, Sullivan, and Wiedekind would not cause even greater traffic problems and accidents. And the traffic impact studies have not even been started, but common sense dictates what the result would be. Uh, another obvious problem, again, with the Wild Creek location would be the fact the golf course is on a floodplain, and this past winter, 
As mentioned, we could, uh, the majority of the course was underwater, but this also happened in 97 and also in 06. And so this is a cycle, and who can say that this cycle will not continue? A golf course can absorb this water, but buildings with like a high school, uh, to me that is just a disaster waiting to happen. Now, I'm not a golfer, but by all accounts, the Wild Creek Golf Course, as mentioned, is a, a PGA rated, and they have, uh, it's, to my knowledge, it's one of the few affordable golf courses still in the area. Um, it's, I mean, as opposed to being a private golf course, it's uh, open to all, and it's a well-planned course, and up until recent years was profitable until uh, they were burdened with this affluent water debt, uh, which I understand is going to be paid off in a few years. And so it would cost millions, upwards of millions, to provide another course uh, of, this, of this quality, like the one we already have, and one that, again, would be profitable again if, you know, if the budget would allow and, and more uh, funds were made available to make it, uh, upgrade it, or, you know, just bring it back to par. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me to destroy something that is a benefit so, for so many. I'm totally uh, in favor of high schools when they're necessary, and if the, if the growing population warrants that, then absolutely put a high school in a suitable uh, location, just not Wild Creek Golf Course. Thank you. Are you Thank you. 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 I think you went to Penmanship School or something, right, Dina? Ah, uh, good eye, good eye. For the record, our Dina Perry. Uh, I'm here today because um, I think we got the greatest Spark City Council that we've had for a while. But you guys are about to pull off a real Superman treat. And I want to see how we, as the city of Sparks, go about authorizing, regulating, and generally controlling a federal crime. So, <laughs> I mean, you guys are pretty good, but you're not that good. Um, I know that we're stuck with pot shops. I don't have an opinion on what anybody else puts in their body. I do have an opinion on something that I consider to be an issuer of secondhand problems. So since we're not going to be making this only edible, we need to be as considerate as we can be about how it will impact other people. And there's also a financial impact. So I sent all of you guys an email, and I sent out 900 other emails. But licensing is a form of permission. I give you license to govern my city. I license my dogs. The state licensed me to drive. So licensing by itself is a form of permission. It's also a form of regulation. So I'm not sure how we, I can understand if we want to sit with victim tattooed on our rear end and just say, look, the state shoved a really bad idea in our direction and we got to live with it. I can handle that. I'm not talking about not having any pot shops. I'm just talking about the fact that once the city gets into a tacit approval through a regulatory licensing process, that I think we open ourselves up for some liability. I mean, I've got people next door to me that might have nine dogs. And that's fine until Washoe County starts licensing, and then they got to answer to me. And that's kind of how I feel about the, the pot shops. So I don't know if it's legally feasible that we could just kind of let them sit there under the state in Nevada and stew in their own juices. Uh, but I do think that this is a federally prohibited drug. And I think that it would be rather audacious for us to permit something that's against federal law. That's just my thought on it. Gosh, I finished up on time. And by the way, I'll give Washoe County School District a darn golf course. Good grief. <laughs> Thank you.
By the way, there isn't a red light on here, so we just assume that it's on. <laughs> Mayor and council members, um, I'm speaking anonymously as I have in the past due to the retaliation we survivors of domestic violence are receiving. And um, I'm just here to update you on our children's legal causes of action against you. As you know, we left with you the evidence doctrine that was authored and signed by uh, Thomas Arthur Ritchie, Jr. He's the president of the District Judges Association. And you've had ample time to read that evidence doctrine in which he states pictures of naked children that are taken by medical professionals that show bruises to the children, including in the genital area. The judge says is pornographic material and that it is not to be used for evidentiary value. You've also read in that seven page doctrine that the judge says that any applicant for a protection order, including minor children that have been sexually abused, is only meant to solely the name that the applicant for the protection order names as their attacker. I'm very glad to see that you have a constituency here that is very aware of Washoe County and the Washoe County School District and what it's doing. Let me tell you one more thing about the Washoe County School District. Their attorney is Neil Rombardo. He's worked for the school district for about two years. Prior to that, he was in the governor's office as an attorney general. His wife is Jackie Rombardo. We are pleased to tell you that today, Jackie Rombardo, who is the court administrator for the Washoe County District Court. And remember, we families in Sparks have to go to the District Court. We do not go to the Sparks Municipal Court. We do not go to the uh, Justice Court. We go to the District Court when it's a member of the family that abused our children or abused us. And Jackie Rombardo stated today in uh, a decision by a, uh, Bridget Rod and Tony Steinheimer, both district court judges, that Jackie Rombardo is destroying the children's evidence that is submitted to the courts. And we're very pleased about this because it's what we've been stating to you all along, and you refuse to address the fact that photographs of children are being ignored. Um, I recommend you Google Nevada policy for handling filed laws and presumptively confidential documents. This is a Supreme Court directive that Jackie Rombardo cannot refuse the filing of our which she had documented time and time again. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kim Sosinski. I'm representing 39 North Downtown, and we just have a few updates. First, I wanted to say, uh, give you an update on the Honey and Lavender Festival that was a couple weeks ago. It was extremely successful. The bars and restaurants that I talked to said that they should have staffed for uh, ribs um, of when they typically. Um, staff the rest uh, in an event like the ribs. There were so many people; they were overwhelmed, um, but in a very good way. We had 20. We figure we have 20 to 30 percent of the people that came to this festival were out of state, out of the not out of state, out of the Reno Sparks area. We had 39 people come from the Fallon Air National Guard, so that was nice to see them. We the 39. It came with the bus. <laughs> Yeah. 39 North Avenue. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yes. Okay. Way to represent. All right. We estimate from vendors and uh, the bars and restaurants that we had about 9,000 people come to this event, and it was the first year, so it was, it was really fantastic. We request one thing that the um, St. Mary's Amphitheater in that little back storage area be cleaned up. We think it's a health issue, and we'd like to see our, with our events coming up that that is taken care of. 
We have a special fundraiser for the Engine 39 train. We have this at every event. We have now added up the train, the insurance, maintenance, and we want to purchase a handicapped accessible car at the very end. And we're 34% funded, so we're looking for fundraising. Uh, we, we have a fundraising effort to make that happen by the end of the year and pay that off. And finally, the 39 uh, directors would like to issue a statement. The 39, downtown, the 39 North Downtown Board of Directors would like to support the sales of marijuana in the industrial area of the city of Sparks. We understand and appreciate the complexities of implementing this new law. It will cost the city money for police enforcement and other issues that will arise. However, we believe it can be a powerful economic benefit to our city with additional revenues and economic stimulus. One of the 39 North missions is to support diverse business opportunities that will benefit both the city and our residents. That's our update. Thank you. Major. Major. Good afternoon. My name is Gerard Mayer. As the parent of a 17-year-old son who was killed by a driver under the influence of marijuana, I am here to oppose the approval of recreational marijuana sales in the city of Sparks. Our children are at risk of graduating high school now. You add marijuana to the mix, more of them will not graduate. THC equals no degree. Marijuana kills on our highways all the time. Marijuana, a marijuana high equals DUI. You have a responsibility, every one of you, by oath, to protect the public safety and health and to do what is in the best interest of the people. Marijuana is the only drug that's ever been approved as a, medi as a medicine in this state against federal law. It is not supposed to be used recreationally because it requires a doctor's permit. There's not another medication in the country that requires doctor's orders to use that is used for fun. This will destroy the quality of life in the city that I thought was better than Reno. Reno's already approved it and selling it. They have a disaster going on downtown with public use on the river walk and the outside seating at restaurants. Nobody's doing anything about it. There are things, there's a line that people should not cross. You should not cross for the sake of money. And this is one of those lines. It is not worth it. If not passing recreational marijuana for sale in this city saves one life, it will be worth it. If it increases graduation rate for one student, it would be worth it. The costs far outweigh the revenue you will receive. You won't even know how much you're supposed to receive. It's a cash business where they can easily avoid taxes by lowering the report of how much they sell. You have no way of knowing what you're going to get. But you do know how much you're going to spend in medical costs, legal costs, deaths on the highway, students not graduating and becoming productive members of society. We have to be better than that. You have to be better than that. We're better than Reno. It's imperative that we do not approve recreational marijuana for sale. Question two gives you that option. You can legally do so. So please do not approve recreational marijuana for sale in the city of Sparks. Keep our quality of life. Thank you. Oh, sweet. <laughs> A lot worse sometimes. Hi, yeah, I'm here to speak uh, about the recreational marijuana use. I have a uh, daughter and son-in-law and three grandchildren that live in Sparks. 
I'm very much opposed to recreational use. There certainly is instances where medical use is appropriate, but recreational marijuana, no. Uh, it's going to be hard for um, enforce uh, the laws as far as people under the influence. Um, it's going to put on them. And like I said, I have three grandsons and one on the way that live in the city of Sparks. And we don't need it. It is, you know, when, when Bernie it's going to be a travesty. You, you, you're going to have upwards of 70,000 people that can come through Sparks to go to Burning Man. And they're going to be buying. And they're going to be using. And they're going to be on our roads. It's terrible. Um, I think it should be federally um, ma or controlled. I don't think it should be up to the state. I think with the trouble that uh, they've been having with uh, supplies in some of the stores in Reno and Governor Sandoval trying to help these stores out. They need more weed. I don't think so. It's not, it shouldn't be used in recreational means in this state, in this town, in this county, it's 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 uncalled for, and I hope you guys vote against it. We're going to be stuck with it, medically at least, out in the county. But uh, here in the city, please vote against it. It's not good for our families, not good for our kids. Thank you. Anyone else under public comment? Shane Johnson, for the record. I, Shane Johnson. Okay, go ahead. I'm here to speak uh, for the uh, measures for uh, adult use cannabis. The, the fact of the matter is that cannabis is already widely accessible to everybody on the streets. And the fact is that a lot of that cannabis is laced with other things that are absolutely horrendous for our children society in terms of impacting DUIs negatively. My personal vice is alcohol in the sense of I enjoy a glass of wine most evenings, often too. That's not everybody's vice, but I will say that alcohol is far worse for society than cannabis is. Um, and I say that with some degree of credibility. The statement was made, made earlier that THC equals no degree. I graduated top of my class in high school have a degree in neuroscience from Brown University, as well as a degree in studio art, have a Fulbright scholarship, and attended Stanford University Medical School. So I don't think, and I smoked some cannabis in high school, okay? It does not mean that you end up being a stupid person. So sorry, but I disagree with you on that, sir. Um, the fact is that the local employers here are providing hundreds of good jobs for people. They are taxpaying businesses. The program that you've set forth will accrue quite a number of good tax dollars to the city of Sparks to help with budgets. So far, these businesses operating under medical have not had any major issues in this city. I think that the police and fire can attest to that. Um, this is not something to be feared. It's actually something to be recognized at a, as, as a commonly used substance already. And if it is going to be consumed by people, let's at least make sure that it is taxed and that the quality is appropriate, that it is not laced with things, and that people are getting what they actually pay for rather than getting something from a drug dealer on the street. Thank you. Sir? Kathleen Shoup. very close to the Wild Creek Golf Course, and I'm here to ask you to preserve that beautiful open space. I've observed a lot of wild animals out there, and 
their their homes are going to be destroyed by being um, paved over or having buildings built on that land. Now, this is really complicated because the school district and the RSCVA are involved, and it feels like a conspiracy uh, to me. Everything was just sprung on us, and, and I think it was an effort to take us off guard so that we couldn't defend our properties and what we hold dear. Um, we're not a group of persons that just have some petty gripes. We, are, we have serious objections to what's going on. There are a lot of open lands that can be used to build a high school. And our golf course is, is beautiful. It's a treasure. Don't let them destroy our treasure. The entire county, all of our citizenry, enjoy looking at that open space. And it can never be replaced. Thank you. Anyone else? Public comment, number four. Somebody filling out a card for number four? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, next is 5.1, approval of the agenda. Anybody want to take anything out of order? Looking for a motion, Mr. Lawson. Move to approve the agenda. Mr. Smith. Second. Moved by Mr. Lawson, seconded by Mr. Smith to approve the agenda as outlined by staff. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passage unanimously. Is that for four? Uh, we're good. Okay, number six, consideration and possible approval of the minutes of the regular Sparks City Council meeting of June 26, 2017. Any omissions, deletions, or corrections? Okay, looking for a motion. Mr. Lawson. Move to approve the minutes as presented. Ms. Bybee. Second. Moved by Mr. Lawson, seconded by Ms. Bybee to approve 6.1, the minutes of the June 26 meeting. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Okay, let's move on to announcements and presentations. Proclamation, Parks and Recreation Month. You know, Tracy, it just seems like last year we did this, didn't it? I should know it by heart, it's about like... 17. You brought a bodyguard. Oh, yeah. Bodyguard. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you've got a bigger one, though? You are. What? <laughs> I need a bigger bodyguard. <laughs> but you couldn't find a tougher one, let me tell you. I'll read the proclamation first, and then I'll uh, let you do some speaking. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Sparks, Nevada. And whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and coordinating the economic and environmental well-being of a community in a region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention <coughs> of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally and physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of a local tax base, increased tourism, and the attraction and retention of businesses and crime reduction. And whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protected groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide veg vegetative buffers to the development and produ produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas parks and recreations, recreation provide a place for children and adults to connect with the nature and recreate the outdoors. 
And whereas we re recognize the vital contribution of our employees and volunteers in parks and recreation who keep public parks clean and safe for visitors, provide events and programming for all ages and abilities, advocate for more open space and better trails, and ensure that parks and recreation facilities are safe and accessible places for all citizens to enjoy. Now, therefore, I, Gino R. Martini, Mayor of the City of Sparks, Nevada, do hereby proclaim July 2017 as Parks and Recreation Month. Thank you. Mayor Martini and Spark City Council. Um, it does seem like we were just here yesterday. Um, but every it is National Parks and Recreation Month in July, and I appreciate you taking the time to recognize us. Um, but I also, again, always thank all of you for your support of Parks and Recreation and, and what we do. We can't do what we do without your support. I also take this opportunity to thank our many, many uh, volunteers, as well as all of our staff. I think I have a couple staff members, at least three, Chris, Tanya, and Shauna, if you could stand up, please. And anyone I missed. That's about a third of our staff right there, so. <laughs> How good is Chris? He's up there with a tie on. Chris, he's kind of <laughs> hiding up there. He's He's officially, you know, community services, but I include them in our staff. <laughs> so I just wanted to share a, an example of what we do every July in the Reno Gazette Journal. This is a complete listing of all the volunteers and partners that we have in Parks and Recreation, from Adopt-A-Park groups, individuals, um, sponsors for Mayor's Cup. I mean, you name it, they're all on here. Um, our commissioners, they're volunteers as well. And um, I just wanted to show you an example of what we do. We tried to do this in a meeting one year, and it was a lengthy list, as you can see. Um, there's, there's no way to say this list in a short period of time. So we do take advantage of Reno Gazette Journal and put this ad out every July. So thank you. I have with me today, I don't know, Jack, if you want to say something now or for the next agenda item. Jack's our chairman of Parks and Rec Commission, so do you want to say something for this one? It's not the one we're supposed to be here for? You're here. You're good. <laughs> this is the proclamation. I saw you come up. You and said, then you're number 7.2. You said, follow me. <laughs> hey, I do what I'm told, as you well know. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Council, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council people, and Mr. Adams, our city attorney, Mr. Driscoll, our city manager, and Teresa. Sure. Okay. So we're done with 7.1. <laughs> let you know, Mayor. Oh, okay. so just, just one comment from me. Uh, I'm in the meeting. You know, Tracy, well, I wanted to make sure we were on the agenda. Well, Tracy's exactly right. With, without the volunteers that we have to do things for Parks and Rec, we never get it done. No. We never come across them. You know what's sad is it's sad, but I understand when the budgets come around and we do the cuts, where, where does it go first? Right to Parks and Rec because it's an easy shot to take money from those guys because they fill in pretty well and do a good job. But it's, it's uh, heartbreaking when we see some of the things that we would like to do that we can't do, uh, some of the weeds that grow that we'd like to get to, and we sometimes have to put it off a little bit. So, you know, my heart goes out to all the Parks and Rec workers and all the staff over there. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous job, and also volunteers. Any of you that are volunteering to do adopt a park or whatever you would do, you do with the city to help the parks. Gosh, it helps a lot, really. Without a, without you guys, never get it done. There's just too much stuff to do. So, thank all of you. Thank Parks and Rec. Okay. Okay, Jack. Go ahead. Or Tracy. Go ahead. We're on. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> Jack. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. I'm Jack Byram, a very proud citizen of Sparks and an immigrant from uh, what is called West Sparks, and they also call themselves Reno. I've uh, been over here for quite a long time now. Uh, 
I'm here today uh, on behalf of the Parks and Rec Commission and is to provide a very, very brief uh, presentation of the highlights and challenges for the Parks Department. I think you received a copy of a document prepared by Tracy. And as you are probably aware, very brief and an engineer like me is an oxymoron, but I've been told to stay on message. As you saw, I was ready to be on message and be very brief. National Parks Recreation Association celebrates, of course, in July, Parks and Recreation Month. Thank you for the proclamation. And our staff and Tracy has chosen this opportunity, if we can, to just share with you some highlights and some of the challenges that the Parks and Recs Department does have. Uh, as you are aware, we are just in an advisory capacity determining the parks uh, facility and recreation programs. I think one of the biggest challenges uh, for the staff and uh, for the city is trying to meet the expectations of the taxpayers and the citizens, especially when it comes to parks, because we hear often, you know, there's not enough, uh, they're not big enough, or they're big enough, but I don't want all those other people there when I'm there. Uh, I want it to be cleaner. Uh, why didn't you clean up after those last people left? And where are the bathrooms? So those are just some of the many uh, challenges that I see happening. But actually, some of the very briefly, some of the programs, the Youth Watch programming, it's evident the economy is improving. Revenue for daycare programs have exceeded expectations as new people are moving into our area and even getting jobs, which is nice. As registration <coughs> increase, so does the demand for staff and more services. Um, more children does mean we need more staff to take care of that. To meet the challenge, maintaining a skilled temporary workforce, wages were increased to remain competitive and then reduce the costly turnover. Uh, at times, children with special needs require not only one-to-one, -one, but sometimes two-to-one service. For special events, despite the efforts to increase calendar days for events, the schedule remains constant. Uh, the events that don't return are often replaced by newly recruited, ev recruited events instead of expanding the calendar. New events started in 2017 include, uh, as of last, last Friday in downtown Sparks, Jet Jam West Coast Series, Craft Beer Week, Sierra Na Nevada Lavender and Honey Festival, Dragon Boat Races, and a new partnership with Art Town. The ongoing challenges include city resources to try to need to help with uh, accommodating those events in Victorian Square. So staff has had to reduce some of their efforts in order to uh, meet those expectations. And um, therefore, we're not really expanding the events calendar right now, uh, even though it would probably be uh, nice to do that. Golden Eagle, Eagle Regional Sports Complex. Um, the facility has great success, speaks for itself. 51 events producing $22.54 million in economic impact to the Truckee Meadows and over 1 million annual visitors to the facility. Uh, the biggest challenge and the ongoing challenge is maintenance and equipment resources out there. Uh, for the most part, the facility is maintained with contract labor while the programs and events are managed by temporary staff. The turnover and training costs are increasing as the local economy approves creating more competition in the job market. And uh, in Tracy speaking with manpower, they've been able to provide a slight wage increase. We're gonna dance. <laughs> <laughs> competition in the job market. In speaking with manpower, we know there's gonna be a wage increase to entice and maintain the needed workforce until four more full-time positions can be acquired and filled. Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, uh, with your support, and thank you, the newly appointed members of the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee have been meeting on a regular basis, and they are creating now a three-year arts and culture plan to guide Sparks in its celebration of its unique identity, community pride, and his historical heritage and cultural diversity, and thank goodness that the fire decided to go south and east the other day near Golden Eagle. 
Some other interesting challenges that I thought of this morning, dogs, bikes, skateboarders, and walkers at the marina. That's been a fun challenge for all the staff and those that are trying to help secure that area. Uh, more pools when it's hot. And I've been trying to figure out this summer, is Nevada in a cooling trend or a warming trend? I don't know which one we're in now, so I need more science for that. All the above. <laughs> the marina events versus regular weekend usage, and of course, parks security. Uh, those are just a few of the highlights that and the challenges that this very talented but very small staff effectively manage each day behind the scenes. It really is an awesome group, and uh, I've been very pleased to be part of the commission to work with them over this many years. I want to thank all of you uh, for allowing us to participate. Uh, thanks especially to the maintenance group. That's a very difficult job. They have been doing an outstanding job trying to stay up with the, the many parks that we have in our area. Uh, thank goodness for them. They're keeping them safe and well-maintained. And thank you to the city manager, Mr. Driscoll, for his leadership and helping support Tracy and the parks. And lastly, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council for your leadership and support. That concludes my remarks. Hopefully I was very brief. And any questions you may have that are difficult, of course, Tracy, We'll be able to answer. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to thank you. I just uh, had the opportunity to go on a big tour and see all the parks in my ward alone, and and that was just my ward. And, and the truth is, I it's it's kind of overwhelming to sit back and think of all that you guys do, and even with what you're given. And so, when I wanted to officially again applaud, I just got to go look at all of that. But I want to remind. I don't know, in a sense, and thank you, that I, I believe when it comes to Parks and Rec and what you guys end up doing, you get to help bring the culture and an atmosphere to our city of celebration and what our families are about. There's a lot of other things that happen for safety and things like that, but you guys get to be the celebration end of it. I was just at Powell Park the other day with a large group and out there watching everything that happened, and it's, it's such an important thing. And so just thank you for what you do. It was awesome. Thank you for your comments, and plus, as you and I were talking before this, I'm uh, very excited about the potential collaboration for the Veterans Memorial and with the parks and looking forward to that review and discussion. I think that's a, just an awesome project. Tracy, I, I want you to tell all of your people that do such a wonderful job. You know, we, we do our free fishing day for Rotary out there. You had it start charging us, but you found a way around it for us to work around, and we can still provide. We spend about twenty thousand dollars a year for free fishing day, and a, a lot of that comes from time that's donated. And your folks are the best. As they're cleaning up trash, they're just friendly. They're they're there for the people, and they answer questions. And the and the park rangers, just awesome. The, you get your whole staff does a wonderful job, and it's a great reflection on the city for somebody to see somebody who loves their job. And that's what's neat for me to see. So thank you. I just want to add that um, um, we can't be what we are also without the maintenance crew, which you know is in community services. So I, I really think that a large shout out needs to go out to Mark Anderson, Ron Corman, John um, Martini for for making our facilities what they are. We, without the facilities, we couldn't do the programming and the quality of life, so thank you. So one more question. Just, just one comment, Tracy, no, no questions. You know, uh, we as a council struggle uh, when the city's growing as it is um, to remember that this is a family-orientated uh, community and that's what the people who live here are like so I, I know that you're struggling with the same issues because you have a lot to do and not a lot of people to do it and and uh, I'll um, concur with Mr. Lawson watching you guys perform uh, miracles out there with what you have and and that's always the, the the question we have what kind of city or what kind of parks do you want to see with the money that we have and uh, <coughs> 
constantly working on that, and I know you are too. So uh, I applaud you and your crew. I've known them for the last 12 years, uh, and they're still out there plugging away. So uh, I, for one, appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, moving on. Consent items. Anybody want to pull a consent item? Ms. Bybee. Go ahead. I move to approve consent items 8.1 through 8.6 as submitted. Mr. Smith. Second. Motion by Ms. Bybee, seconded by Mr. Smith to approve consent items 8.1 through 8.6. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Let's move on to general business. 9.1, consideration, discussion, and possible approval of payment of $5,000 in Western Nevada Development District, WNDD. Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Steve Driscoll, city manager, for the record. During the budget process, we contemplate and you approve um, different costs that are associated with membership to different organizations. Um, but your rules also ask that when the bill comes due, that I bring it back to the council, and even though it was, it was confirmed in the budget, that I um, ask you if you are truly still interested in participation. This is one of those. Um, our current membership in the Western Nevada Development District does include uh, Mr. Lawson as um, president or first past president, and also Mr. Dare as the newest appointed member. So I'm just here asking whether or not you want to still participate in that, and if, and if the... Uh, the answer was yes, then it would process the request for the $5,000 membership. One of the things I just want to remind everybody what this group does, when I got into it, I actually had no idea what it was and kind of growing. It's a regional group that does a lot of things of pulling things together. They do some major economic development portion and meetings here at UNR, and those things have gone statewide. It's something that's pretty strong, and it's good to be at that table and so I think it's awesome, Ed. I think Ed's done a fantastic job of leading that group, actually. So I got to come alongside that. And uh, so I just it's important that people see that it's a regional portion that we get to get in there and help speak life into something that affects more than just Sparks. But if you look at it, what happens in Fernley and other places definitely does affect us as a region. So it's an important thing. Mr. Lawson. And as president of the WNDD, they re-elected me again in July. I was at the meeting, though, so that was good. Um, this group is is pretty cool because it's all the eight northwestern counties and uh, commissioners and uh, council people from all of, all over. It's the federal arm of economic development, so we have some projects that we will be looking at some federal money to and using the Western Nevada Development District as the vehicle to obtain those funds for the city of Sparks. Getting some of our uh, federal money back from Washington, D.C. is always a good thing. So uh, this, this group is uh, really uh, proud to be the president and, and working with them because they, they get a lot done. And we have an economic uh, development conference every year. This year it will be in Las Vegas on February 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I will be down there to speak. And then we'll have it, it'll rotate back up to UNR next year. And uh, it's at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas this year, and then it rotates. So it'll go back and forth, north and south. And uh, we're starting to get some enthusiasm from the south part of the state to join this group also, just because of the things that we can do. A lot of what's happened in Story County, as far as infrastructure, bridges on I-80, have gone through the federal arm of the EPE. I'm going to say it wrong. The federal part of the economic development, and uh, they've gotten reimbursed for a lot of their roads, railroads, and, and fiber optics there. So we're kind of looking at that as we move down the, the road to save some money for our folks in Sparks, too, and use some of the federal money that y'all send back there to Washington, D.C. So thank you, Steve, and I hope that uh, we will fund this $5,000. Um. I move to approve the payment of five thousand to Western Nevada Development District. I know I'm on that board, so I don't know if that's a if somebody else needs to do that, but I move awesome. to approve it. 
He's gonna second it. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> We have a motion by Mr. Dare, seconded by Mr. Lawson to approve the $5,000 payment to WNDD. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Good job, Thank you. Okay, let's go to 9.2. Consideration, discussion, and possible appointment of an alternate member of the to the Regional Planning Governing Board for a remainder of a three-year alternate term from the following pool of applicants listed in alphabetical order, which would be Christopher Dare and Ron Smith. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask that you appoint Christopher Dare. Uh, Christopher, I think, has been working on some regional issues and working on regional it's been the alternate, correct, uh, Chris? Different. Not been the alternate yet, but there are things I'm involved with, so yes. Anyway, he's been working on regional uh, regional items, uh, which take into consideration Washoe County, Sparks, and Reno, things that we approve together uh, jointly. So I think it's a very important board, especially now with all the growth and things that are going on in different areas. So I would like, my recommendation would be to appoint Christopher Dare. Questions? Okay, Mr. Smith. I move to appoint Christopher Dare as an alternate to the Regional Planning Governing Board, filling the remainder of a three-year term through January 30th, 2019. Mr. Lawson. Second. Moved by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Lawson to approve Christopher Dare as the, as the new member of the Regional Planning Governing Board for the remainder of a three-year term. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Unanimously, thank you. Consideration and possible approval. <clears throat> <Excuse me. coughs> Let me try that again. Consideration and possible approval to approve a 2014 Peterbilt VACCON truck from Atlantic Machinery Municipal Maintenance Equipment in the amount of $1,230. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of the Council. <coughs> Ron Corman, your Public Works Manager, for the record. Um, I apologize. The title of this uh, agenda item is incorrect. It's uh, We are seeking permission to purchase a 2017 Peterbilt VAC contract from Atlantic Machinery municipal maintenance equipment. Uh, this is a replacement for one of our uh, storm drain maintenance vehicles that's used for cleaning the catch basins and the outfall pipes. The old vehicle is in excess of 17 years old. Uh, we have a life expectancy of 15 years on these um, pieces of equipment. So we have exceeded that and recently we've had mechanical failures on one of our units which deems it irreparable. So therefore, uh, we're seeking a per, uh, permission to uh, purchase a new one, $412,230. Mr. Adams, are we okay with the way this is advertised? Okay. Any questions from the council? Okay, questions. So Ron, I wanna, well, I'm assuming I was up first. Sorry, Gino. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Thank you. I can see that bar. That's amazing. So, Ron, um, when I first got on the council, we were leasing all of our equipment, and we've since then switched to paying cash for our equipment at this point. Is So this will be paid out of the motor vehicle fund cash money, right? Yes, sir. This will be paid out of the motor vehicle fund. It was budget for, uh, for this year. If I remember the round numbers, it was like a million dollars a year we were spending in leases, and now we're taking that same million dollars and paying cash for vehicles that saving the taxpayers a lot of money. To clarify, we were leasing fire equipment, which we are now paying for cash outright, and um, this is a cash outright purchase on this equipment, yes. <laughs> okay, I move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Daw Dawson, Mr. Lawson, to approve agenda item 9.3. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thanks, Ron. Okay, 9.4. 9.4 is a consideration and possible approval of a professional services contract. AC 5383 to West Coast Code Consultants, Inc. for building permit plan review services in the amount not to exceed $332,000, Mr. Ornelas. Uh, Mayor Martini, members of the City Council, I'm Armando Ornelas, your Assistant Community Services Director. Uh, if it would be okay, Mayor Martini and uh, members of the Council, I'd like to uh, present on items 9.4 and 9.5 together, they're, they're companion items essentially, and then the City Council can consider separate motions. Um, so these are companion items, uh, and as you may be aware, the City has increasingly relied on third-party plan review services uh, over the last several years. Uh, you know, we lost a lot of staff uh, during the recession, and as, uh, as demand for uh, plan review services has uh, grown back, uh, we've uh, relied on these third-party firms. Um, the, the addendums items 9.4 9.5 are essentially to have these two firms, which are uh, West Coast Code Consultants, that's item 9.4, and Charles Abbott and Associates, which is item 9.5, uh, to continue to provide these services. Uh, the proposed West Coast uh, Code Consultants contract is for $322,000, while the Charles Abbott uh, contract is for $144,000. These are uh, contracts that would take us through the, uh, hopefully through the uh, FY18. Um, you know, basically, uh, they're not strictly tied to the fiscal year. They're, you know, we, this is, these are estimates of what we will need in this coming fiscal year. Uh, if it, if we have more de development occurring, then we potentially would need to, to uh, add money to these contracts. Armando, one second. Can you run those amounts by me again? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mayor Martini. Uh, the West Code. Uh, West Coast Code Consultants contract is in the amount of $322,000. And the, pardon, thir, 32, sorry, my, my correction. Uh, while the Charles Abbott contract is for $144,000, adding up to $476,000. Uh, staff believe this approach uh, of uh, third party review has served the city well and is recommending approval. Uh, funding uh, totaling this amount was approved as and the uh, Development Services Enterprise Fund as part of FY18 budget, the FY18 budget. So that uh, concludes my presentation. If you have any uh, specific questions, I will do my best to address them. I move to approve 9.4 and 9.5. 9.4 for 332,000 and 9.5 for 144,000. Separate motions. Separate motions. Okay. Then I move to approve 9.4 at 332,000 for West Coast Code Consultants Incorporated. A second, Ms. A second and a comment. Um, I, I just want to uh, say I, how much I appreciate the uh, approach that you guys are taking. We have more, um, which the good news is we have a lot more requests, uh, more business permits that we're processing, which is good news with the growth in our economy, which is great for the city, and also good news because by using contract services, it doesn't cost the city what it would cost us if we had to add full-time employees with benefits and and the cost to keep adding to the the payroll we can get that work done with contract services uh and get more bang for our buck and i i think it's a uh, good news on on all fronts so i support the motion so a second you were the mine. second that okay was second. who made the motion to approve please i did Moved by Mr. Dare, seconded by Ms. Bybee to approve 9.4. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. 9.5, Mr. Dare. I move to approve professional service contract to Charles Abbott Associates Incorporated for building permit plan review services for an amount not to exceed 144,000. Mr. Abbott. Second. have a motion by Mr. Dare, second by Mr. Abbott to approve 9.5. In the amount of hundred, in the amount of hundred forty-four thousand. <laughs> None that I know of, at least. <laughs> you just get half. Make jokes or no? No. Abbott, no relations with. <laughs> Lost the meeting. But that's okay. okay. Motion by. Mr. Dare. 
Dare, seconded by Mr. Abbott to approve 9.5. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rondo. 9.6 Consideration and possible approval of impact fee agreement number 26 with Pioneer Meadows Development LLC to allow for participation and use of credits if in impact fee service area number one. Mr. Martini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, I'm John Martini, your community services director before you today for your consideration uh, with impact fee agreement number 26 with Pioneer Meadows Development LLC, which is uh, uh, Lennar at uh, Pioneer Meadows. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done one of these. As, as the council is aware, Impact Fee Service Area 1 has a CIP uh, that includes things like flood control, regional trails, fire stations. Um, if a developer chooses to construct uh, a CIP element within their development, they are eligible to receive credits up to the amount uh, uh, of, of the value of what they construct. Uh, the first step in um, being able to allow them into the credit program is they have to agree to the terms and conditions of the General Administrative Manual for Impact Fee Service Area 1. That is the agreement before you today. So in short, uh, should the council approve it, uh, Pioneer Meadows Development LLC will be eligible to have a trust account set up in their name. And in the future, should they do some uh, creditable work, uh, we'll be able to issue them credit subject to an impact fee credit agreement that would come back to the council for your approval. Uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions for Mr. Martini. Mr. Dare. Um, I'd like to approve this impact fee agreement number 26, and I can prove that it actually got built. I just ran on that path this morning, and so it's right next to my house in my ward. And so. Any other questions? <laughs> And I too ran on that path. <laughs> <laughs> He's not last night this morning, and I'll do it again tonight. Great. I'll second the motion. Be careful in the heat. I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I uh, drove on that path. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, that, you passed me. I did <laughs> several times. Um, I didn't see motion by any Mr. of you. Dare, second by Mr. Smith. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you, John. Okay, 9.7. Consideration of possible award of a bid 1718-002 to Lair Auto Electric to complete the emergency vehicle upfits. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council, Ron Corman, your Public Works Manager. Today I'm before you to seek approval to on a contract with Lear uh, Auto Electric for upfitting of police vehicles. Um, in the past, we have always gone with an un informal, quote, process. This year we decided to, uh, we have quite a few vehicles that need to be upfit in quite a few different styles of vehicles. And so this year we decided to do something a little different and put it out to uh, bid a formal process through purchasing. Dan Marin in purchasing um, uh, definitely led the way. And uh, we came out with a um, two bidders and Lear Auto Electric was the winning bidder. So um, seeking permission to move forward with them as our vendor. Okay, questions for Mr. Corman. I move to uh, to award bid number one uh, seventeen eighteen dash zero zero two for emergency vehicle upfit to Lear Auto Electric. Second, Mr. Abbott. Second. Moved by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Seeing none, please vote. 
Next is 9.8, consideration, discussion, possible direction of the city manager <coughs> for possible amendments to Title IX title, and Title XII of the Sparks Municipal Code regarding principal parking needs. Good afternoon, Mira Martini and members of the council. Tracy Dominguez, Parks and Recreation Director. Before you is a, a request to give possible direction to the city manager for some recommended amendments to Title IX and Title XII of the Sparks Municipal Code. Um, as you may be aware, we, are, we have some rules codified um, and some are not. And so I'm here before you uh, requesting to add a few to the list of codified rules in order to maintain a safe environment in our park system for our community and our visitors. Um, examples include um, archery, golfing. Uh, those are two examples where there are um, ranges or facilities built specifically for those activities, um, but occasionally we do find those activities in our parks in an unsafe manner, and uh, we wish to codify that. Um, also, um, others might include um, inflatables <coughs> in city parks, which are the, the inflatable rides that you see at special events, uh, the bounce houses, things like that. Um, unmanned aerial vehicles prohibited without a per permit is a suggested add-on, which is, um, includes drones. And um, that's pretty much it, actually. I just I try not to do a knee-jerk reaction to all the things we see in our park system, but I really want to codify those issues that I do believe I've I have personally witnessed. Our staff has tried to um, minimize that activity, but they don't have a lot of enforcement, and um, that would cause injury to others. So, um, with codification of these rules. It will help us to, we'll add it to our signage as required by code, and it will help ourselves as well as um, Sparks Police Department when and if they do uh, arrive on site. It helps a lot to have a codified sign to refer to. I had a good conversation with Chief Allen prior to this as well. So these are, these are the principal rules, and um, a couple of them will have a more in-depth policy that um, will back them up that we can do in-house. That's good. You know, if they could be enforced, I don't have a problem, but sometimes it's, I don't know how we do that. But, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I'll answer any questions that you might have. Tracy, in 9.34, it says inflatables prohibited without a permit during special events. 12.24, it says inflatables are pro prohibited in the city of Sparks. So Correct. they're they're only permit they're, they're only permitted with a permit and special events, not for your family picnic. Correct. Is that what it is. Yes, okay. there are two different chapters. One is prohibited in our parks and public property, and in Chapter 12, as it relates to special events. As part of the special event application process, uh, we will issue a permit, but there'll be a policy associated with that defining exactly what will be permitted and what will not. <laughs> uh, will, what will not be permitted, even at the big events, um, as we enforced a couple years ago, it's policy but not code, are the inflatable rides. Um, so those will still be prohibited in any situation. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bybee. Um, Tracy, I was wondering, do the drones, uh, have they presented a safety uh, problem? I'm thinking of kids that have them at home. I mean, you don't have much room. You don't want them out in the middle of the street. It, it seems like a logical place to go to a park that's more open. Has it created problems? And I guess we the first half. And then where would permits, where would people get permits and under what circumstances? Um, it's not presented uh, a large problem as of yet. We have been thinking about it as drones become more popular. Um, 
we were, uh, I was working with my counterpart parts. They've been, we've all been asking each other, do you have anything in place with Washoe County or City of Reno or Carson City? And nobody really has anything in place. So um, um, we've had just one or two instances, for example, at the Sparks Marina Park. You know, that's a very busy park. And um, people, we get complaints that the drone is buzzing down and almost hitting them in the head or startling them and things like that. So there are rules per NRS, and I would like to be consistent with that. And a permit would be done through our Parks and Recreation Department. Is that you out there, Abbott? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Any other questions? OK, looking for a motion. Mr. Abbott. I move to direct the city manager to initiate a movement to the Spartan Ms. Bybee. Second. Moved by Mr. Abbott, second by Ms. Bybee to approve 9.8. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. Passes unanimously. We'll move on to public hearing action items. Um, 10.1, public hearing, consideration of possible approval of resolution number 3314, a resolution authorizing the Financial Services Department to establish an interfund loan to the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Fund. Welcome. Record, and I'm here before you to ask your approval for an interfund loan. I come every year to try to avoid findings of NRS that say that if one loan, one fund gives another fund a loan, then it has to have a public hearing. And if we go negative cash in any fund, then we have inherently incurred an interfund loan. The grants funds in our reimbursement type activities, so we pay out and then get reimbursement and are negative most often. I um, thought last year when I came before you that $300,000 would be enough to avoid an interfund loan, but we had a fairly large project um, 16th Street and F for pedestrian improvements, and we went negative 400,000. So we will have a violation of NRS, and I'll come before you in December when I present the CAFR and have a plan of corrective action. Part of the plan of corrective action will be that this year I'll ask for $500,000 for an interfund loan for the grant funds. Um, the pertinent information you'll need to know that it will be up to $500,000. It will be for 30 days and it will be from unrestricted general fund resources. I think that is all of the pertinence you would definitely have to know. And I'm available for public questions or any you might have. Any questions or comments? Mr. Dare. I do have one. Uh, some of our other cons um, governing bodies around us periodically find money in that they didn't know they had within certain things. and so. My question, only question to this is, so we're having uh, pockets of these things sitting around. How will they get reported to us that we know what's in there to make sure? I, don't, I know that, like, for example, Reno all of a sudden found this kind of money sitting around. And so I, when I'm thinking of us going to get these cash, cash um, loans or whatever to, to help us in those moments, how do I just making sure that we are seeing that specifically the general fund that would be loaning the grant funds loan um, money and you you could come down at any time and see what the cash in the general fund is as of today it's a million three at the end of this year we think it will be three nine and I, I think that's pretty darn accurate it's the lowest amount sorry that's the fund balance not the cash cash today is a million three fund balance at the end of the year is supposed to be three nine and it's the lowest that we've had in in ten years so the general fund is going to be fairly low on cash. Okay, so There's these are just coming out of our own. We're just giving ourselves a loan out Right. Of, I didn't understand. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Deb? I have one. No. There's specific rules for uh, loaning one account from another account. You have to pay that back by a certain amount of time? If it's an interfund loan, it has to be less than one year to qualify as it. And we've, at this, this um, resolution will say within 30 days. Okay. Usually it's two to three days for grant reimbursement. Awesome. I move to approve. Wait, it's a public hearing. Okay, I will move to Okay. Approve. Okay, I'll open up the public. Anybody in the public wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the council. Mr. Lawson. 
Move to approve resolution number 3315 authorizing an interfund loan to the general fund of the city of Sparks as necessary for general fund cash flow purposes. We have a, we have a motion, Ms. Bybee. Um, I will second to approve resolution number 3314. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thanks, Ted. You oh, want you're the next one, too? Mm -hmm. Okay. 10.2, public hearing, consideration, possible approval of resolution number 3315, a resolution authorizing the Financial <coughs> Service Department to establish an interfund loan to, to the general fund from the motor vehicles maintenance. This one is different funds loaning. So the first one was from the general fund to the grant fund. This one is from the motor vehicle fund to the general fund. Last year we had it set at $1 million and thought it'd be enough, and it was. We had a two-day negative cash of $76,000. But this year we have a $1 million less cash expected overall. So I'm asking for $1.2 million as the possible loan just in case, and this month is our tight month. $1.2 should do it. Uh, the terms of the loan will be up to $1.2 from Unrestricted Motor Vehicle Fund resources up to 90 days at 0% interest. And I'm available for any questions. Right, exactly. <laughs> any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll open it up to the public. Anybody in the public wishing to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the Council for Action. Mr. Dare. I move to approve resolution number 3315, authorizing an interfund loan to the general fund of the City of Sparks as necessary for general fund cash flow purposes. Uh, Mr. Abbott. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Are you up again? I'm done. Thank you very much. Ten point three. Second reading. Public hearing, discussion, and possible action on bill number two seven one nine. An ordinance amending Title V of the Sparks Municipal Code, Sections 5.80.010 to 5.80.200, and adding 5.80.35 and 5.80.55 and 5.80.195 to the license medical marijuana dispensaries to sell or dispense marijuana and marijuana infused products at retail. That should be enough, huh? Welcome, Armando. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Smith and members of the City Council, I'm uh, Assistant Community Services Assistant Community Services Director Armando Ornelas. So, um, in a more abbreviated ver uh, fashion, uh, Bill 2719 would amend Chapter 5 of the Sparks Municipal Code to permit the city to license and impose associated fees for exist existing medical mar marijuana establishments to engage at in at retail, uh, that is, adult use or recreational marijuana cultivation production, testing, and sales pursuant to a license issued by the State of Nevada under the authority of Nevada Revised Statutes Chapter 453D. Uh, Bill 2719 also provides for the licensing of distributors to transport marijuana. Staff is here before you today with this agenda item because on April 10th, the City Council directed the City Manager to examine the City's business licensing and zoning ordinances and prepare code amendments uh, that would enable the city to permit existing medical marijuana established to operate as retail marijuana establishments. Staff is also able to present this agenda item today because on June 26, the city council adopted a business impact statement stating that the proposed Title V amendments do not impose a direct and significant economic burden upon or directly restrict the formation, operation, or expansion of marijuana businesses. Uh, the city council is now at the point in the process where you have a a policy decision to make regarding whether or not to permit the cultivation, processing, testing, and distribution of retail marijuana in the city of Sparks. If the City Council adopts Bill 2719 and the proposed amendments to Title 20, and which is the next agenda item, then you will be permitting that. If you do not approve the proposed amendments to Titles 5 and 9 today, you will either be deferring or rejecting that option. Uh, with regard to the license fees proposed in these amendments to Title 5, uh, the, uh, the fees are as proposed as such, a one-time application fee for each establishment of $5,000 and for each quarter based on the establishment's gross receipts for the previous quarter, an additional fee of 3%. So on 
on uh, revenues of a million dollars, the fee would be for that quarter would be thirty thousand dollars, for example. The additional three percent fee is the maximum amount the state of Nevada permits local governments to charge a retail marijuana establishment, as was provided for in Senate Bill 487, which was passed and signed into law this past legislative session. Bill 2719 also proposes that marijuana independent uh, testing laboratories pay the same license fees that any other business in Sparks that doesn't have a privilege, privilege license pay. So essentially, they're, they're treated no different than any other business uh, the labs are under Bill 2719. Uh, Senate Bill 487, which uh, was again passed by the uh, Nevada legislature and signed by the governor this past session, um, stipulates that marijuana establishments do not need to designate their marijuana inventory as medical or retail but rather that the inventory can be kept as a single inventory until the point of sale to the consumer. The proposed city ordinance requires, however, that any marijuana establishment that is licensed by the state under uh, NRS Chapter 453D uh, for retail marijuana obtain a City of Sparks retail marijuana license and pay the corresponding fees. So um, the, while the, the state is providing for differential uh, fees for uh, medical marijuana and for retail marijuana uh, under the city of city uh, retail license and your license under 453D, uh, you pay the 3% on, on your gross receipts. So that's, uh, I wanted to make that clear. Uh, if the city council does approve these uh, changes to Title V, the city would not issue a business license for a MME to operate as a retail marijuana business until the applicant has been approved for a temporary license by the department under Nevada Revised Statutes 453D. So, you know, they'd, they'd have to be, have that state approval before we would be able to issue a business license. All of the requirements of uh, Chapter 5, our business licensing chapter, uh, that apply to MMEs would also apply. These include the provisions that we uh, uh, have reviewed in the past with you addressing revocation of a license, the duties of the city's chief of police, and access of city officials and officers to marijuana establishments. Uh, with regard to financial impacts for the city, and I know this uh, came up uh, during the uh, discussion uh, on June 26th regarding the business impact statement. Um, you know, frankly, the, the, the operating history of medical marijuana establishments in Sparks is very limited. We have five quarters worth of data. Um, and over that period of time, you know, those, those revenues have been, have been ramping up because you know, we've had uh, more establishments coming online. Uh, and uh, City Manager Driscoll, I think, is uh, for any questions as to any anticipated revenues uh, from retail marijuana to him. But I, I think the, the long and the short of it is that given that short operating history, given the difficulty of being able to compare um, state laws and regulatory structures and the, frankly, the nature of the industry and what state is other, uh, it is very difficult for your staff to be able to project city revenues and costs for regulating and providing public services resulting from the expansion of MMEs into retail marijuana. Um, what, we, what we can't say, frankly, is just that the proposed business licensees fees will at least partially offset the city's costs. So uh, that concludes my presentation on um, Bill 2719, and I will do my best to address any questions you may have. Um, so Armando, you just you just stated, uh, make sure I heard you correctly, that because we can't we can't anticipate what those revenues would be, nor what our costs would be, that the licensing fees would partially offset the costs, but we don't know for sure what those costs will be, which I'm guessing will include what other states have have seen as far as law enforcement, code enforcement. Um, <clears throat> our increased um, business, you know, affects to city staff as well as to uh, fire police, emergency rooms, the community cost uh, we can't anticipate because of the lack of data because it is new here and we don't, we don't know if it, if it will, what those costs will be or if this will offset it or not. It's possible that the revenues would exceed the costs. It's, uh, it's possible uh, that, that only they would only partially offset those costs. And and to follow up on that, if if we were to approve this, 
and we collect these fees, uh, especially the, the 3% quarterly, um, and we have an increased need in cost. Our budget is set for this upcoming year, so we're not anticipating that we can hire more people, hire police. How does that work if in the middle of this year, which just started, fiscal year just started, if we have the increased cost and the need for more staff, it's not in our current budget, and would the money be there in order to do that, or is it a full year out? If I may, uh, Councilman Bobby and Mayor Martinez, I'd like to uh, refer that question to, uh, to uh, City Manager Driscoll. Steve Driscoll, City Manager, for the record. Um, because our budget is already set and this would be new revenues that were not anticipated and potential new expenses that were not um, anticipated, there is a process in the state budgeting that would allow us to augment um, based on additional revenues received that would then allow us um, with council approval after the augmentation to be able to spend those monies on services. And so that's part of the reason from our standpoint because we have no realistic way to project revenue or expense. Um, we kind of have a safeguard from the standpoint that um, we, will, we know we'll have additional revenues if it's approved. If and when there are expenses, then we would have to understand the relationship between those two before we get into the next budget cycle, which we normally start our budget discussions in the January, February timeframe. We've had many conversations here on uh, this, and I've personally taken a lot of time to try to wrestle with this. And our voters, I believe, have said a few things. One of them, obviously, this, this passed. Um, but for me, they also voted on some other things when they at least voted for me to be in office. One of those was that we'd create a safe place for our families, that we'd have an atmosphere in Sparks that we value and we hold on to, and that it's something that truly is not just for us here today, but generations to come will see that this is a place, that atmosphere we talk about with Parks and Rec or the, the value of life. I think when it comes to the fact that we don't have the data, we don't know. There's too many things we don't know. I can't think of another business around, another thing we'd say yes to that we don't have any information on. And we're doing it. And there's all different, I, I get the reasons. I've listened, I've heard even the larger mental health issues that come, even the safety of the employees here as finances come through our doors of cash. I think all those things are things we need to take into consideration. They're things I don't believe we have information for. And I, and I, I tell you, I have truly wrestled with this quite a bit. Um, one thing I would say, is I'm not questioning that those who have taken on the business, I've actually got to go and see what they do, and they're doing it as efficiently as they can. This is not to do with them. This has to do with what's good for Sparks. I know I've been here for eight years, nine years in Sparks. I'm from Las Vegas before here. I know what things can turn into. I grew up in the midst of some of those things. I value what we have, and I will continue to do so. And because of that, I, I, I do ask that we don't do this at this time. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, this is a public hearing, so I'm going to open the public hearing and call up some speakers to talk. Uh, you have three minutes to speak. Uh, first, I have Ray Rocha. Is it Rocha or Roca? Rocha. Rocha. I'm Ray Rocha. I live here in Sparks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now All we right. can. Now, we, sure now we can. can. All right. To me, it's a pro and con argument on the marijuana issue. It's real simple. Pro, you follow the money. It's tempting by government agencies to go for all the money and individuals, a lot of money to be generated versus all the potential ill effects. The con is in two parts. One is legally. Number one, we're supposed to be a nation of laws federally, and it's still illegal to have recreational marijuana. It's that simple. It's illegal, okay? Number two is social, medical, and economic con issues. Some of this is from Colorado, and some is my personal opinion. It's a potential gateway drug. I don't care what anybody said. It's much stronger than 20 years ago, and I grew up in a county, Humboldt County, that's one of the 
golden triangle, and I never used it. Uh, crime from cartels in Colorado has not decreased. It's gone up. 67% of the cities in Colorado do not allow marijuana in their cities. The potential of traffic violations and accidents and the cost that it would do to law enforcement is something to consider. The other thing is in cost to employers for testing and further <coughs> costs on testing, potential lost wages. With that all said, I'm very much against it. I don't think the city of Sparks should endorse it, even though other the county and city has. We don't need to do it. Thank you. Next is uh, R. Richard Franklin. Do not wish, does not wish to speak, and he's in opposition. Okay. Next is Helen Franklin. Does do not wish to speak in opposition. Is that correct? Yes. Where'd she go? Thank you. Should have been able to pick you out all that beautiful yellow. That's not a problem. <clears throat> Next is George Lee. Do not wish to speak, but in opposition. That's correct. Okay. Darla Lee does not wish to speak in opposition, right? George Major, Gerard, I'm sorry, Gerard. Time start, I guess I can go. My name is Gerard Major. I am in opposition to this, as you already well know. Um, you tout your family atmosphere for this city, and you tout your parks and recreation department if you approve this, the stoners will take over and we will have nothing left for families in this community. What I don't understand is how our state and local governments believe it's okay to violate federal law at will and expect all of us to follow all the laws that you pass. That's hypocritical. <laughs> Can't do that. You need to either follow the law or get out of business. You, I've already mentioned what the DUIs are going to cost us. One DUI death isn't worth the revenue you might get. You're selling your souls for money if you pass this, and you will destroy this community. It won't be worth living in. Downtown Reno, people don't even want to go to anymore because of what I mentioned earlier, the rampant public use. I've talked to people who say, I'm not going there anymore. That's what's going to happen here. So please, do not go down this road. You're shooting in the dark. You don't have enough information, and the information from Colorado obviously shows that the cartels are blooming, the, uh, the black market is flourishing, and you're going to destroy the lives of our children in this community if you pass this bill. So please vote no. Thank you. Right. Jennifer Snyder. Good afternoon. Many people around the country view legalized marijuana as inevitable, something we must consider. The marijuana lobby has created a brilliant marketing strategy of social norming marijuana, but that doesn't mean everybody wants it. You represent the city, but do you know for sure your community members want recreational marijuana in their city? We're prone to think everyone is using pot, yet less than 10% of the public uses it. So how does a marijuana business make money from such a small market? They take a page from the Philip Morris playbook and make sure the product is addictive by using products with high THC, 
Start users young and make sure to market to them. This is all about money and creating a lifelong customer. A few will make a lot of money and most of us will pay. The costs such as safety on our roads, increased need for law enforcement, workplace injuries, and the future of our young people. As perception of harm goes down, drug use goes up. It has been said that regulating marijuana like alcohol will decrease teen use. But taking into account that more than 65% of Washoe County teens report using alcohol, it seems unlikely treating marijuana like alcohol will result in less teen use. Marijuana is an addictive drug, and one in 16 who use it will become addicted. Those who used it in the 80s didn't become addicted because this didn't become, people didn't start studying it until the 80s, so there wasn't the potential to be addictive like it is now. In fact, in Nevada, Marijuana is the number one reason for adolescents entering substance abuse treatment. That's today. That's prior to marijuana being legalized. And adolescents who use marijuana regularly can experience a lasting eight-point IQ reduction that may prevent them from finishing their education and gaining stable employment. The cost of alcohol abuse in the United States is at least $185 billion annually. For every dollar we bring in, we spend 10 so why is marijuana being held up as a city revenue model? Consider these questions. Are you concerned about driving on roads after someone has consumed an edible with 80% THC? Are you concerned about employees coming to work high? How will you protect our most vulnerable community members, our children? If you've spoken to those who work in child protective services, you'll hear stories of awful things parents have done to their children while high, such as blowing marijuana smoke into a baby's face to get it to stop crying. Allowing recreational marijuana in our community encourages more use and puts our children and adolescents at greater risk. As was stated previously, marijuana is not family oriented. I live in Sparks because I like it here. I do not want to see everybody using pot. I don't want to see children and families affected by it. Thank you. Jeff Steffelbach. Excellent, sir. Good Thank you. I got one right. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm also against recreational marijuana. I spoke earlier, and there was a man earlier that spoke for recreational marijuana, stating how smart he was, and he also acknowledged using marijuana illegally while in high school. It's, we don't want that for our students. Maybe he thinks it's okay. I don't know. Uh, maybe he wants to be able to buy his weed legally. I don't know. Maybe he wants higher grade weed. Don't know about that. I've been to many meetings on this, especially for the medical facilities in the area. Dispensary personnel came up and spoke wholeheartedly for the use of marijuana medically. They also acknowledged using it medically. So they're working, they're under the influence and they're working in a dispensary. So I don't think they have drug testing. Um, that's pretty much what I have to say. I think it's a travesty. It should be federally controlled. Our state and local governments have not shown the ability to listen to the constituents. Um, where I live is in the county, and the commissioners went against the constituents in my area and approved a medical marijuana facility out off of Pyramid in La Posada, one of the busiest intersections. They'll probably want to be able to do uh, recreational also. We don't want these people on our road. Uh, like I said earlier, Burning Man's coming. If we allow recreational marijuana in the city, you're going to have traffic jams. Thank you. Now I have one here from Shane Johnson, wanted to speak on 
uh, item number four, but you can't speak on this one if you want. Is Shane here? You're okay. You're Shane. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyone else on ten point three? I've got. What's your name? Yeah, I've got one on eleven point one, which you can speak now if you want. Yeah, it's kind of all the same, but I got the numbers on here, so I want to make sure. So I got uh, Larry Larry Osland, and I've got two more that I'll call. I want to say that I'm opposed to it very much. Um, um, most of the points I want to bring up have already been said. I won't rehash a whole lot of that, but I will rehash the fact that it's been advertised on the news just in the last few weeks um, that in uh, Colorado that the accident rate has increased by about 10 to 15 percent over the nearby states. That's a direct quote what they put on. I will say that as a person that I'm proud to say that I've never used marijuana. I can honestly say that. And I can also tell you that if I chose to want to use it tomorrow, I wouldn't know where to get it. I really honestly wouldn't know where to get it. That's me. I don't think we need, I'm sure there's other people that are in the same status as I am. I don't think we need to make those weaker people able to get it and have the problems on our streets. I think that right now, I, I know that some people must know how to get it. It's obvious. Uh, also, they have to put up with possible law enforcement uh, catching them in the act of doing it. If we make it legal to, or able, accessible, that takes some one of the powers from our law enforcement. Larry. Lee Mazur and Rebecca Gaska. Opposed but do not wish to speak, is that correct? Okay. Will Adler. you on TV all the time, don't I? Are you trying to cut my time or what was the deal? No, 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 I, I would never. But uh, uh, thank you. My name is Will Adler, the Sierra Cannabis Coalition. Uh, you may have seen me on TV, as the mayor said. Uh, I would like to address some of the issues brought up today and sort of put this into perspective because uh, the, the merits of marijuana are not on trial here today. That was done in November. And marijuana is actually illegal to possess and use as of January 1st this year in Sparks. So uh, a, a lot of local governments have struggled with that and that detail. I personally was down in Carson City just last week talking about this as well. And they had the same arguments and the same contradictions because it's not do we approve marijuana or not. It's do we approve the regulating of marijuana in our own backyard? Because today, uh, as somebody said, he does not know where he could get marijuana. Well, he can go to Bloom, Sierra Wellness, or any dispensary in Reno because all four of them have approved recreational sales. He can then drive them over to Sparks and use them in his own home, and Sparks is simply just missing out on the transactional value of selling marijuana here. You just have to regulate what comes back to Sparks instead of taking charge of what's sold in Sparks. So I just want to point that out. Um, and in general, though, I think Sparks has done one of the better jobs of regulating marijuana in Nevada. You've limited it to commercial industrial zones. You're not going to have a dispenser over by Shields. You're not going to have them located where you do not wish them to be. A lot of places like Vegas, other places, had much more lax regulations on how close they could be to people's homes, commercial corridors, or uh, other places like that. But Sparks has done a pretty good job limiting it to in commercial industrial. Uh, and I think they'll continue to do that. Uh, I, I don't see any change in that in your regulations. And then as far as the fee goes, uh, a lot was said to, is the fee enough? Is there enough of a fee? Well, Sparks is actually maximizing the fee in its entirety. Uh, you're doing the $5,000 application fee plus the 3% gross on our total sales. That's actually the maximum amount you can charge for a marijuana fee, so says the state of Nevada. So it's not so much, is it enough to cover everything? Because I don't think it is. 
uh, because there's no fee that you can say this covers all the costs of anything. Uh, do you charge enough for your alcohol distributors and alcohol you know, licenses at bars to cover the cost of alcohol? Certainly not. Uh, is this enough to cover all marijuana? We don't know right now because you don't know your cost yet, but you're doing everything you can to try to meet those fees because you're maximizing everything you can uh, and you're in your power to do so. Uh, but I would like to answer any questions you guys have about conflicts, what's happening in other states, because there's there's a lot of perception of what marijuana is or isn't. But the, you know the reality of the day is marijuana is in Nevada. It's legal in Nevada, and it's legal next door in Reno. It's just a matter of you know do you want to operate with the current gentlemen you have here and ladies who operate businesses in Sparks, uh, or is it one where you're just going to leave it up to the other local governments to to regulate and then allow your people to bring it home. Two sparks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Chair Daniel. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Mayor Martini and Council people. I'm Cher Daniels. I live in Sparks, Nevada. I am a child of the '60s. I know many knew many people who are dead, who started out on marijuana, ended up on heroin. Uh, I also know that the dispensary that was just voted on in, out in Pyramid Highway, there's a 7-Eleven, a McDonald's, a high school, churches, library, middle school, elementary school. That is not industrial, in my opinion. And I am against this, and I pray that you will vote no. Else? Going once, going twice. The hearing is closed, and I'll bring it back to the council for action. Okay, questions? Any, any further information, Mr. Arnellis? I don't have any further question, Mayor Mar or information, Mayor Martin. Have one clarification for dispensaries medical it's a thousand feet from Greg McCarran Glendale McCarran and Rock and Greg and Rock and Glendale right uh, that, that uh, it, it's all the same as it was uh, under for for medical marijuana establishments and in fact it's only the existing medical marijuana establishments that can be licensed that'll be addressed by uh, Ms. Karen Melby in, in, in her anyone else Um, there, there are a lot of issues here, uh, a lot of them that concern me gravely. Uh, primarily, I was elected to protect the safety and well-being of the residents of this city, and that is my job to do that. I really have an issue with recreational marijuana, not with medical. I'm fine with the medical in its current form and how we have licensed and zoned it, um, I'm fine with. Uh, however, it's a, it's a different issue, and I think we can look at other states. Uh, traffic fatalities, some people have mentioned. 62% uh, increase in not accidents, in traffic fatalities in Colorado. In Washington, and AAA um, had this information, their traffic fatalities have doubled as a result of the legalization of marijuana. Um, yes, um, Mr. Adler, it is. It was approved by the voters in this state, but it is still a federal offense. My question is, are we at risk of federal funding, of loss of federal funding, because it's a Schedule I drug that is not legal by federal statutes, and we don't know what this administration will do. Do you want to address that, or should I keep I can going? address that if you like. Okay, well, why don't we go there, and then I have a few more points. All right, Doug Thornley with the City Attorney's Office. The Supremacy Clause in the Constitution, um, which is where the genesis for this theory is coming from, typically when you analyze whether or not federal law supersedes state law, you're looking at a two-part question. The first is whether federal law is intended to occupy the entire space. <clears throat> the second is whether there is what's referred to as a direct conflict in the state law and the federal law. And in this case, the way this question has been resolved is that the Controlled Substances Act is not intended to occupy the entire space, and that 
there's no direct conflict, even though it seems like there might be, because states passing laws that allow for the use of marijuana do not directly impinge on the ability of the federal government to enforce their own laws. And so what you're seeing right now is that Congress has told the Department of Justice that at least in the medical context, they can't spend money to prosecute crimes at a federal level on that basis. <clears throat> but that's for medical. That is for medical, <clears throat> yes. Does the same hold true for recreational? Not as of today, at least with the information that I have. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, the other few points I wanted to make briefly, um, as, as far as the voters and what they voted on in uh, November, uh, we, we had statistics we asked for um, regarding our turnout. Our turnout in Sparks was 79%. We have very good voter turnout. Um, in the whole city, the yes vote was 3.37% higher citywide. And in my ward, Ward 4, the voters voted no. I was elected out of Ward 4. And I feel responsibility to my constituents as well as agreeing with my constituents. Ward 4 did not pass recreational marijuana. And I feel obligated to uphold what the voters have, because the voters have. <clears throat> uh, the voters did, did vote against it in my ward. Um, the, 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 really, the bottom line for me is the only problem I can see from recreational marijuana is the money. And it's the money for businesses and investors. And we have some very reputable, great businessmen in this, comp in this, in this region that are investing in the recreational marijuana business. And I have no issues with the actual uh, people who are those business owners. They're good businessmen. I have an issue with what the business is, with the recreational marijuana itself. And that is that is my problem. And the only thing positive I can see is that it is money. It's money for the state. It's money for the city. It's money for the people who own it. But I'm asking what the cost is. So what is the cost to our community? What is the cost to my, you know, my son and my two little grandkids? What is the cost to employers? who uh, have people coming to work high. What is the cost to all of us on our roads when we go out on our roads? Uh, when you're a business and you've got business vehicles out on our roads, uh, that cost to me does not, uh, I, I can't justify that. And I guess my final question is why would we as a city want to approve something that would require additional revenue for increased police, for increased code enforcement, for increased staffing and medical and fire and all those increased costs even if uh, it's covered by the, by the recreational sales and the licensing, why would we want to approve anything that demands that we have those costs covered? So I'm um, strongly in opposition, uh, personally, and in representing uh, the residents of Ward 4. Thank you. Mr. Jeff. Uh, I had a question for our police chief, if that's okay. Sure. So one of the things I've, I've heard, and I've, some of it might be conjecture, so I, I, I say that just because I'm looking for confirmation. In Reno, I've heard that public use, there, they've been instructed as police officers to do nothing about public use, maybe tell them to go on, they, but there's not any criminal activity in that. And I have a f quite a few different friends who are part of county and Carson County, and they said part of the problem is that the state didn't even put together the back end of what it would mean to prosecute someone that's using in public. There's nothing they can really do because they can come and say, tell them to move on, but there's not, there's not really any enforcement there. I don't know if that's true, and I'm hoping that you can give us some direction how well, you're going to direct Sparks, if this were to pass, how, how, what do we expect? I watched yesterday, just, just the other day, five young boys walk out into an area right by my house and sit around and do their thing. You know, and I thought about it, could I, should I call the police, should I what? And then I heard, I heard from others that there's not much going to be done anyway, and I don't know in Sparks. Uh, Brian Allen, your police chief, for the record, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Uh, there, there are a number of uh, NRSs and Sparks Muni Code still in place to uh, legally um, stop individuals from using while in public places. Um, those were directed in the state law, and just like any other law, we will 
um, direct our resources to enforce the law. What actions you take today, we will enforce. We are the enforcement branch of government. And just like you passed a ordinance uh, making camping along the Truckee River a social issue into a criminal issue, whatever is voted on today, um, we will enforce. If you do see five individuals in a public area um, utilizing cannabis or marijuana, we would expect a phone call and based on our priority of calls for service and the other calls for service based on our priorities, we will respond and take enforcement action as appropriate. Doug, uh, is there in, in the law, in the question, I guess it is on the ballot that the people passed, is there any mandates in there that say that we have to offer or have retail stores to sell, uh, not medical, but recreational marijuana, that the city of Sparks must, are we, are we on a list or something that says we must sell it or we lose state funding or whatever? And for the record, Doug Thornley with the city attorney's office. Mr. Mayor, uh, what question two does is it affords the locale uh, the authority to uh, approve or not approve zoning requirements for this type of location. And so you can extrapolate that out to if you do not approve zoning requirements for the location or you explicitly decline to approve zoning, uh, a zoning ordinance for this type of business, uh, that you can effectively <laughs> zone it out. That is not to say, uh, as Mr. Adler said earlier, that is not to say that that would explicitly outlaw the use or possession of marijuana inside the city of Sparks, it would only preclude the legal sale of retail or adult use marijuana inside the municipal boundary. My turn to weigh in now. So I've, I've done a lot of research on this and it's, I've read the Colorado, there was a white paper put out by Colorado and basically after 15 pages they say that cannabis in Colorado is basically neutral. It hasn't increased in certain populations. It has increased usage. Certain populations, it's decreased and almost gone non-existent. It's revenue-wise, it's neutral. It provides like 1% of the state budget. So it's not a money-making proposition that everyone thinks it is. Uh, but on the other side of it, Colorado did it a lot differently than the state of Nevada did it. They basically said anybody who wants to distribute marijuana and grow it can do it. All you gotta do is come down and get a license. That's not the way it works in Nevada. We have a very specific number of people that are uh, checked out by the state and only those dispensaries, and Sparks has three. We don't have one in, on Pyramid Highway anywhere. All three of ours are located in the industrial area, right where the police department said it was easiest for them to enforce the law. The other part of this is I hear a lot about we're, we're going to lose our streets, we're going to lose our kids, we're going to lose all these things. But, you know, the bottom line is, unless you are in your home, you cannot use or smoke cannabis, period. Not in your car, not on your front lawn, not in a park, not at a a uh, special event you can't use it there and it's a six hundred dollar ticket and i would encourage our police chief to write those tickets that's a, that's a pretty good chunk of money and i know that if i was a cannabis user and i got a two or three or four of those tickets i might change my ways and the, and that's incumbent on the good people of sparks to report those just like councilman dare said do i call or do i don't there's no doubt call it's illegal what they're doing. But I'm also a Nevadan. And a Nevadan wants to be free. They want to be, they want to be left alone. They don't want to have government intruding in their lives. And that's my overreaching thoughts in the whole thing is, hey, if I want to wear a seatbelt, I should be able to not wear a seatbelt. As a matter of fact, I don't wear a seatbelt. That's my one lone protest for government, you know, it's like, I uh, <laughs> don't wear a seatbelt. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess what? I've, I've gotten two tickets for not wearing my seatbelt, but it hasn't changed what I do. So the bottom line is I think there's a freedom issue here, too. The people of Sparks, they voted for it, and particularly in my ward, which, uh, by the way, is we are now ward-only voting. So I answer to the people of Ward 2, and there's an 11% margin. 
of people that wanted it versus didn't want it. And the 11% in the political world is basically a landslide. So, and not, not to, worry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Donald. But 11% is a landslide. So I, I think, to me, it's, it's much ado about nothing. I don't think that uh, there may be some education in the beginning. And there's a different philosophy in Reno than there is in Sparks. We are family oriented. But we're also individually oriented too. We wanted our people to be able to do what that they voted for it. They and they voted for it several <coughs> times. They didn't just vote once, they've had to vote twice to change the constitution. So the bottom line is I want to go forward. I'm definitely gonna support it. I think we got three great business owners that are gonna be our uh, test market basically for the next year until the state comes up with some new uh, laws. But uh, I have complete faith in, in the Dukes and Mr. Newman and, and, and of course, Brett Scaleri's group over there. So I got great faith in you guys. That you're doing, you're do, gonna do the right thing. And we're gonna do it legally as per the Nevada state laws. So that's my two cents worth. And I do have family still in Colorado and I go and visit Colorado and I'm sorry, but I just don't see people walking down the street smoking marijuana. And, I, and they live in a college town, Fort Collins, where I go to watch my alma mater play football, and I just don't see it. And they have a whole lot more marijuana dispensaries than, than we'll ever have. Thank you. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I know we're all convoluted on this issue, and we've all struggled with it. Uh, the fact is we live and die by the vote, and uh, the people in the state of Nevada voted for this. And... The fact is four out of five of our wards voted for this. Um, personally, I'm against recreational marijuana, but I will support this because of the people voted it. Somebody said, one of the gentlemen here said that uh, we're supposed to do what our constituents say. Well, our con constituents said uh, they want it to be legal in the state of Nevada. It is legal. They are licensed to sell it. All they're getting from us is a business license from the, from the city of Sparks. So. Um, by the way, I just left Denver yesterday morning, and uh, I was there for the whole week, and I didn't see any any use. And I know it goes on. I just don't hang out in those those areas. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to do what my constituents want me to do. Mr. Adams. I keep my comments when I'm supposed to speak, and I wish you would too, because what you just said, that was out of line. Was well, then it was, the gentleman it was, it. yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay, well, I guess it's time. Mr. Mr. Abbott. To approve and adopt bill number 2719, an ordinance amending Title V of the Sparky Municipal Code. Lawson. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Abbott, second by Mr. Lawson. Uh, any further questions? Sorry. Okay, please vote. Passes three to two. Okay. Let's move on to 11 1. Planning and zoning, second reading, public hearing, discussion, and possible action on bill number 2720, an ordinance amending title 20 of the Sparks Municipal Code to permit licensed medical marijuana dispensaries. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Mayor Martini and Council. I'm Karen Belby, Development Service Manager. Before you today is bill 2720, an ordinance amending title 20, which is our zoning code to permit a license existing medical marijuana establishments to cultivate, produce edible or marijuana infused products, test and sell at retail, which is also known as recreational. On April 10th, 2017, the city council directed the city manager to prepare for future city council consideration amendments to title 20, our zoning code. This agenda item before you today proposes changes to title 20. 
the city zoning code to permit existing medical marijuana establishments to operate as a marijuana establishment as codified in NRS 453D and referred to in the proposed Title 20 changes as re at retail marijuana establishments. Currently, Title 20 does not include any non-medical marijuana establishments. The proposed amendments are to sections 20.03025, medical marijuana dispensaries, and also 20.03026, medical marijuana production, testing, and cultivation. In section 20.03025, which is the dispensary section, the permit uses will remain medical marijuana dispensary. The name will be medical marijuana dispensary. The only changes being proposed in this code before you today are amendments to the preamble, administrative changes, and where the code references the word medical marijuana as a product or an item that's now going to be reworded to, to eliminate the word medical. There are no changes to the locational criteria and spacing separation criteria, especially for dispensaries. Dispensaries currently are w restricted within a thousand foot radius of three intersections in the industrial area, Rock and Glendale, Glendale and McCarran, and McCarran and Gregg Street. They have to be within a thousand feet of that intersection. They also must be a thousand feet from any Nevada licensed um, substance abuse treatment center. They are um, for section 20.03.026, the changes are, which is our, um, the cultivation, testing, and production section, the changes include administrative changes again, re renaming product faci production facility to a facility for the production of edible marijuana or marijuana-infused products, and removing the word medical when it's referring to marijuana as an item or an item to be grown, produced, or tested making no distinction between medical or retail marijuana. The amendment does not change the term for these facilities, and they will remain to be called medical marijuana cultivation, production, or te testing facilities. That also does not change the spacing requirements and locational requirements. They must be in the industrial area. The amendment also includes adding a new definition at retail marijuana, which is defined as marijuana cultivated produced or processed into edible or marijuana-infused products, tested or sold for the consumption of adults over the age of 21 who do not possess a medical marijuana card in accordance with the Nevada Revised Statutes, Chapter 453D. On June 1, 2017, the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this code amendment and re recommends that the City Council approve the amendment to Title 20. That concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Karen? Questions? Okay, this is a public hearing, so I'll open it up to the public. Anyone want to speak on this particular item? Have no cards? Come on up, sir. Uh, did you you put that down at 11-1 on your card, didn't yes. you? Yes. Uh, my name is Gerard Mager, and I just want to let you know how disgusted I am in the last vote that I just heard and how you don't really care how many deaths you have on the highway by the marijuana that will be sold from the dispensaries in this city. It doesn't matter about the vote of the people. They shouldn't have never had that vote. We live in a democratic republic. We do not live in a democracy. We should not be legislating by ballot measure. You were elected, the legislature was elected to make these decisions for us and protect us from ourselves. You are the ones who are supposed to do this. The people were misled, they were lied to, they were scammed. They didn't even know, they weren't qualified to vote on this issue. And you went along with it. And like I said, the blood is on your hands. Thank you. Ray Rocha, you did what you did, and you voted for it, so it is what it is. However, I disagree with a few of the points. One, I think that 
in the long run, within a year or two, you're going to see it where it opens up to other areas. I don't care what anybody says. Once it starts, you'll be able to smoke it outside. It's fine or not, it's going to happen. The other thing, since you did pass it, at least make sure it's strictly in industrial areas. I'm still against it. I think it's a bad measure, but at least put it in industrial areas. That's all I got to say. Close the public hearing, bring it back to council for action. Questions? Any questions? Mr. Smith? Uh, well, comment first. You know, um, one of the comments you just made, sir, is that uh, we shouldn't put it to the vote of the people because they don't know what they're doing. How many times have you sat around in a room or in front of the TV and saw politicians in Washington thinking they know more than the voters do? And so they did what they wanted to do, and then people are mad at them. So. Uh, I move to adopt Bill Number 2720, amending Title 20 of the Sparks Municipal Code. Mr. Lawson. Second. Moved by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Lawson to approve 11.1. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes three to two. Thank you. Uh, boom. 12.1, comments from the public. Anyone want to speak under comments from the public? Again. Okay, comments from city council and city manager. Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two items. <clears throat> the first is an announcement. Due, the resignation, due to a resignation, the city of Sparks is looking for someone to serve the remainder of a term on the Sparks Planning Commission. The term runs through December 31st of 2018 and this appointee would be eligible for reappointment for additional terms. Persons interested in serving on this committee should complete a community service application available from the city clerk's office. You may also apply online at the city's website, www.cityofsparks.us. Click on city services on the webpage, then click volunteering, get involved, and then click on fill out the city of Sparks volunteer application. Applications will be accepted until the close of business on July 14th, 2017. Secondly, um, Mr. Mayor, I apologize. Um, I didn't uh, put a presentation on your agenda for today, but it would be timely to have your new community resources manager come forward so I can introduce you officially. So Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. City Attorney, Madam Clerk, this is Julie Duell. Um, through the process and the through um, an assessment center, she was a successful candidate. She's passed all the background checks, and she, as of today, has joined us full time on our staff um, to take on the community services manager position, uh, to work as your uh, PIO, to also work with a couple of your committees as a, uh, a city liaison, and then we will be helping the city with its messaging and celebrating the good things that we do and um, making sure that we have a good working relationship with the media and yourselves. So I, I present Julie. Thank you. Welcome. you words, Julie, please. Very much looking forward to working with you all and representing the city of Sparks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more announcements, questions? Okay, seeing no further business, we are adjourned.